This lecture summary was brought to you by KidSense Media. We're looking really at the way that everything all fits together and I should be suggesting to you from, that I'm talking only from an OT perspective and of course from an OT point of view we're looking to use a whole range of strategies to get to that organisation and behaviour. The trouble is that <coughs> the visual strategies, the biggest challenge I'm finding is visual strategies are the best thing I know to support a lot of this stuff but they're not considered to be a treatment strategy in themselves. So it's stuff that you pick up accidentally. So the formal passing on of this is really hard within the OT world and then the formal passing of that to hello, hello. <laughs> So because you pick up that visual strategy stuff informally, being able to give structured information to other people is extremely difficult. Um, in terms of putting that all together though, I guess what we're talking about today are really the kids for whom they just don't seem to either be getting the verbal information or they can't organise themselves to make the most of that information. So what we're looking to do is to work out the strategies that are going to help them, not so much to organise their lives, but to organise their thinking, which is an entirely different thing. The thing that I find most fascinating is that of all the information that we process, it's 55% visual as an average. And yet what we know is about most classrooms post year, YouTube might have some different ideas, but probably post year one-ish, it becomes so much more verbal, which is why we see so many kids who do okay during kindy, manage reception, and to some extent you won, but then we start taking back all the expressive visual cues that we give to kids and it becomes more predominantly verbal, which involves lots of memory. So often these are where these more subtle kids become apparent to us. So if you think about the fact that we're looking at verbal information being, sorry, visual information being hugely predominant in terms of our learning, but then there's also the vocal information. What do you get just from the intonation or the rate of speech, not what are people actually saying. The trouble is that many of the kids we're talking about don't clue into what does my body, what is my body saying to you when I'm talking to someone else, are you recognising I'm not listening to you? So all of this fits together and explains for many of our students why they have great difficulty with information that's the transient versus the non-transient. So trans in terms of using visuals, the, the reason that I'm looking to use them are to help kids to understand what we're wanting them to do, to help them know where to start, to help them to know what to do if they get stuck. So you see basically improved attention and concentration and planning and sequencing. But most of all, from my point of view, is that it lessens the need for adult support which means more independence as well as better academic output. So as we were saying last week, what we want to make sure is that we provide kids with strategies, not the solution. I see the visuals as the way to do that, even for the most typical students. In my job, I get a chance to talk to lots of <coughs> students about their energy levels. And what I'm finding is that for lots of students, it's really helpful to break down where is it that my engine is going in my body? Is it going super duper fast or is it going slow? Or is it going sort of slow but not super duper slow? So this is one way of actually being able to get information back from students as well as give them student, uh, information about where you <coughs> think their alertness level is. However, what we find is, as we've been discussing, we have more and more kids with anxiety issues. And so it's really helpful to be able to clarify between what does my body tell you so for many kids who are anxious, their body looks quite still, but in fact their brain might be going very rapidly. So it's really helpful to be able to clarify between what do I see versus what's actually going on in my head.